This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 11th of July, 2019, and I am 2J. I am JM. And I am Miss K, your host. Again, in case you missed it, this is Winning Headlines. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Yes, sir. Yes. Daily Nation, shock for gamblers as bet lines blocked. Mm -hmm. The star, Uhuru stops secret Mount Kenya meetings and mm -hmm. the standard anger over Kenya power token scam. Let's what do we start begin with? with this star story, who stops mm. secret Mount Kenya meetings. Yeah. This assassination story just will not die. They keep no. finding new no. ways to bring it back to life. Because it's such fun. You know it how is. we love? We love a scandal and this is the top most scandal. Mm. And in fact, it has gone a whole new level. Yeah. A meeting was held between um, President Uhuru Kenyatta and DP Ruto in which they agreed to have the meeting stopped. So the president apparently issued a directive asking for the assassination committee to disband but not fully disband <laughs> told them to stop meeting where they were meeting where they were meeting at the lamada hotel and in dark hotels but to mm. pick hotels that have more light and no basements at least basements that are not used that are used for parking mm. do we think this story is actually true i don't i don't think I'm, so i'm not buying it because if we go through it. our criteria Yes, I um, think speculation. Let me, let me let me take you through our, uh, through our criteria. We have a three-part criteria. We used to break down the headlines for you. We ask ourselves, is this headline topical or is it speculative? Is it repetitive or is it groundbreaking? And mm. finally, is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? It's such speculation. And it's, it's borderline lies. There. Yeah, Absolutely. I think instantly I think we, we toss, toss that. Get rid of that. Daily Nation, shock for gamblers as bet lines are blocked. Yeah, I think this is my favorite story of the day. Mm -hmm. So at approximately midnight, Mm -hmm. Last night, <laughs> people tried to go to the Mpesa to draw their, you know, gambling money, and they found shock and horror. You cannot. So what happened is, Matiangi went and told all the betting companies, or actually 127 of them, mm -hmm. to shut down payable access for customers. Whoa. And this is because, if you remember, six months ago, they had um, <coughs> said they had set some conditions for the betting companies yeah. for license renewal. And the betting companies failed to comply. And so they said that because of that, we're going to shut down access to M-Pesa pay bills. But what's happened is that the customers are now becoming collateral damage for yeah. a tiff that the government is having with the betting companies, which I think is completely unfair. That's I think true. the government has no business interfering with what people do with their hard-earned money. Or, hard or, earned. Or, or on the contrary, I have a contrary opinion. <laughs> you know, betting is for rich people. Rich people only, wow. honestly. You know, <laughs> wow. you can't have poor people betting. You can't have ordinary Kenyans betting. Because Cost races, dog That's a terrible races. country. So I'm actually a pro Matiangi on this one. Really? You know, draconian action on betting. This is something that has to be discouraged. I think that by the time you're messing with people's money, don't, don't mess with my money because you're having an argument with, with another company. With the government. Yeah, that's not. I'm not into that. I don't know. I'm on the fence because I think I've, I have a history of of betting, and I take a moralistic stance yeah. against it because mm -hmm. I think it's like any other addiction. So the government is trying to curb it, and it's trying to protect the most vulnerable in society. So yeah. to that extent, I agree with Jonathan. But I also do agree. And it's that not being reasonable. It doesn't want to be reasonable with no, betting it funds. It's very reasonable. annoyed with it's betting It's very annoyed, funds. and it wants to protect it's, uh, the most vulnerable. But on some extent, I do agree. Who is with the objective? Jay. Who are they if trying I to? If I have it? gotten that not had earned money uh -huh. my party nasibu lack money mm. let me keep it yeah so at least let them get access to mm. it but shut down the company all right mm. this is right. my contender for winning headline but let's look at the standard you're parking uh, it uh, i'm parking uh, it okay yeah let's park that one anger Finally. over kenya power token scam this is the standard and this is a story that is very dear to me because i have been a victim <laughs> of or, or so i think of kplc fraud mm -hmm. Right now, um, KPLC has admitted that there has been some fraud going on, yeah. um, particularly with a prepaid uh, tokens system. Right, so what happens is insiders at uh, KPLC have been uh, going into the system, buying tokens, and then selling them off to third parties. And then those third parties then sell them off to customers. At a premium. Uh, yeah, presumably mm -hmm. at a premium. Well, you know, that, that, that kind of shenanigans is going yeah. on. And what prepaid customers end up finding is that they have unpaid bills. And so what some of them were asking, like this Sylvia on the headline, is yeah. I'm a prepaid customer. How can I have a pending bill? Yeah, but when I pay. The, the presumption of prepaid the, is the I The presumption of prepaid is that I pay first to get the service. So if I haven't paid, how is it that I, you know, yeah. end I up service. having a pending bill? And, and so on and so forth. So, so that is kind of being pushed to 
uh, mm-hmm. consumers. Yeah. And so the debate is, sh- <coughs> shouldn't that instead be charged on the company? Yeah. Because it is the company's fault. Precisely. Right? But these are the dangers of a monopoly. And yes. I think... Kenya Power is a monopoly. It yeah. is a monopoly that they probably behave, needs to be broken down. They can behave very badly and nothing's going to happen because we rely so heavily on them. Precisely, precisely. Yeah. So we're left with no choice. But anyway, I think this ought to be the winning <laughs> headline. What do you think? This is an issue that resonates dearly with a lot of Kenyans. Personally, I'm today I'm with JM because Public although, interest. Although, although both of them are angry, shocked mm. residents yeah. and users of a platform, I say more people are angry with Kenya Power. So we nation. have a winning headline here. The standard That's gives us true. our winning headline. Right. And on to our next segment, the political people that we call cartoons in this country. Mm-hmm. Just like the headlines, we have a three-part criteria. We used to break them down for you. We ask ourselves three questions. Is the cartoon humorous or is it dry? Is it satirical or is it pessimistic? And finally, is it effective or just plain lazy? Yes. Mm. Let's start with, with standard. the standard. Gado. All right. All right, so today Gado is... Con- well, I think this is the third newspaper now that is continuing on this Donald Trump tirade. Because mm-hmm. I believe he is either still in the UK or he has just left. <laughs> so it is a caricature of President Donald oh. Trump, robes and all, with a crown, and he is showing... It's the- such a revolting cartoon, <laughs> honestly. This is disgusting. He is mooning. Mooning being he's exposing himself to people in a crowd. Um, and he's also giving them the finger. And the people yeah. in the crowd are uh, Prime Minister Theresa May and some other people that I cannot make out. And I think the Queen is hiding her face. The Queen yeah. as well. Oh, yes, that's true. And his security detail. Um, honestly, I think this is quite distasteful, in my view, personally. Honestly. I mean, even, beyond, even yeah. beyond distasteful, part of our criteria is that the picture it needs to be humorous. I didn't even laugh at this. I don't find it. I know, right? It's, it's kind not of funny. funny. It's but not. You see, we all like have this. It's like a tongue-in-cheek kind of laugh because I don't know. Yeah, I think it's yeah. I think it's talking about how childish of a person he is. You know, yeah. you're shaking your butt in someone's face. You're giving them the finger. I mean, really. The only thing I will do is issue a warning. There is the long arm of the Donald. A Canadian um, cartoonist was fired for oh, putting yes. out um, cartoons that were negative. Considered. And considered yeah, yeah, yeah. towards, towards, towards Trump. Donald Trump. Let, let him come to Kenya. Let him. Absolutely. I think that is I th- really. So it, I it think we toss it. it. Just yeah. toss it. Toss it. All right. Okay. Daily Nation. Victor Dula. Oh wow. wow. <laughs> this is a precious, blue. precious, precious cartoon. <laughs> this is a caricature <laughs> of um, Oscar Studi <laughs> in a tux with a yellow tie, performing a dance with a lady in waiting. The lady happens to be Miguna Miguna and she's wearing a wonderful blue dress and they look, I must comment yeah. that they look so elegant. They look very elegant. Very voluptuous. She's got pearls. She's doing a twirl. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. They're both saying despots <laughs> and the caption on the side is in politics there are no permanent yeah. friends or enemies. Only permanent mm. interests. interests. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> it's fantastic the, it's way the way their eyes are closed they're really enjoying the music yeah I'm, I feel they like I'm right there twirl. I'm right there with them yeah I love I, it I think this would, would be a good contender yeah. oh, for winning for, winning for, cartoon. for, for winning cartoon yeah. oh, of course the context of this cartoon is that Oscar Sudi said that he was happy to help get um, yeah to Miguna, Miguna, Miguna Miguna back into back the country back from Canada yeah, yeah. Into the country. All right. I say put it in the parking bay. Put it in the parking bay. Let us good. look at ozone, right? Yes. So what we are looking at here oh. is an M pig uh, eating uh, an arm of a taxpayer. You can see the taxpayer there mm-hmm. who uh, has been dismembered. He's got one arm missing, uh, one uh, limb uh, missing limb as missing, well. Yeah. And it says the cost of maintaining our legislators. This is now getting out of hand. You very know, macabre, very dramatic. It's very macabre. And I have to say, when I originally saw it, I saw it in the photocopy, and it wasn't as bad. I know, right? You didn't see all the blood, right? I didn't see all I mean, the this blood. Is really in macabre. color, it's, it's too much for me. Guys, I'm very conflict- I'm conflicted today. Well, I am, I'm of two minds. <laughs> On one hand, I think it's a fantastic cartoon. Yeah. Are you serious? Because I think it speaks to the state of this country, right? Mm. <laughs> I feel like no cartoon has articulated the headlines we've been seeing about the greed of our MPs. But. As best as this has. But. Ozone. These little doodles that you do on the side, they need to Why? stop. They're not adding any value to the cartoon. This is now getting out of hand. I mean, this is so obvious. Come on. So, who do we give it to? I think <laughs> I'm going to go with Victor Dula. I love I... Lady Miguna yeah, and Oscar Sudi. I think we give it to... I agree. Let's give it, let's 
Daily Nation is about to give him the stuff. Today, I'm the one introducing our final thought. So, and now, our final thought. I hope I did to am proud. Uh, We've been looking at a history of mankind and civilization from the past to our present and maybe a peek into our future. Mm-hmm. On Monday we began with a book by Yuval Noah Harari, Homo Sapiens, translated as The Wise Man. Mm-hmm. And in it we looked at three revolutions, or the three revolutions that brought us from Homo erectus to the Neanderthal, to the Homo sapiens that we are today, and they are the cognitive revolution, the agricultural Mm. revolution, and the scientific revolution. Mm. But of all three, the most important, I think, is the cognitive revolution, Mm. because it's what gave us the things that we agree to today. It gave Mm. us human rights, Mm. it gave us democracy, things we can't touch and feel, but things we all agree to as Mm. humans, to be led by and to agree and to agree to their rules. Yeah. Yeah. The next book we looked at was Guns, Germs, and Steel. Now that we become Homo sapiens, mm. how is it that some Homo sapiens fared better than others? Yeah. What are the roots of inequality in the world today? And we came to the conclusion that there's only one root to inequality, and that is geographic luck. Mm. It just depends on mm. where you were as a Homo sapien. If you are in the Fertile Crescent, mm-hmm. then you did better than those of us who are in the Global South. <laughs> I don't know. Yesterday, we looked at the sixth extinction by Elizabeth Colbert, in mm-hmm. which we found ourselves as Homo sapiens causing a new extinction. There have mm. been five great extinctions in the past, but all of them were natural, yep. caused by forces outside of anyone's control. But this sixth and maybe final extinction is being caused by human beings themselves. We're yeah. changing our environment in ways in which we are unable to predict the outcome and it is possible that we might be the victims of our own making (laughs) but also it's possible that we are ingenious enough that we will take ourselves out of this Mm. extinction yeah and maybe that's what homo deus again by yuval noah harari Mm -hmm. is asking us to do maybe we will be the future Mm -hmm. but not the way we think we are yeah so again this is the second book by Yuval Noah Harari Mm -hmm. and he says that this is not a book about futurology or about predictions and prophecies he says rather it's he's trying to attempt to map the different possibilities that may happen while remembering that human agency is at the center of it all meaning that we as humans have the choice to determine what path we take so this book sets out to examine the possibilities of the future of homo sapiens And he starts out by saying that humans have two main drivers, two innate things that make them move. And he says the first is searching for immortality, because nobody wants to die, right? Of course course. not. And the second is happiness, because happiness is fleeting. If happiness wasn't fleeting, you would have that happy moment and just be content in that. But you're constantly searching for happiness because it's a drug that you want more of. So I think what I might do is just summarize the key points that he lays out in mapping for the future possibilities of homo sapiens. And the first one he says is that humans are going to become gods. And that's a big, very big and bold statement. So homo sapiens, as you said, um, translated to wise humans, are going to evolve into homo deus, which translated from Latin means human gods. And I think we mentioned it before how we're becoming demigods of a sort, because we have mastery over our environment, we're able to change it, to manipulate it, we have gone from being creators in terms of making children to creating other things. And so he says that we're going to find the rise of techno-humanism. Mm-hmm. So in pursuit of immortality and happiness, humans will begin to turn to technology to upgrade themselves. So through biological engineering, through cyborg engineering, computer engineering, all manner of things. So that's putting chips inside you yeah. or developing AI or just all manner of things. And then the next progression that he sees is something he called the great decoupling where we separate our ability to feel from our ability to reason. These two things that make a conscious human. We're going to separate them and we're going to relinquish them to AI. And so the result is we're going to create AI technology that is smarter and more intelligent than mm-hmm. us. So and what's the non- our point? So the non-conscious but highly intelligent algorithms yeah. will begin to know us better than we know ourselves. So let me just jump in there, right? Okay. And let me first define what an algorithm is. All right, yeah. Yeah. An algorithm is not anything complicated. An mm-hmm. algorithm is a set of instructions to resolve a well-defined problem. Yeah. So a recipe which has ingredients and which has steps that you must take in order for you to arrive at the cake, 
That's an algorithm. Mm. So uh, hold on. Uh, Before you get there, I want to get to the conclusion of the book because I think okay, let's, sure. let's finish what he says and then we can address that. All right. Okay. Because the final step he says is that dataism will become the new religion. Mm. So humanism will be replaced by dataism. So instead of um, looking the, through, looking at the world through a homo centric point of view, we start looking at it through a data centric point of view. Mm. How can data solve problems rather than how can humans solve, solve problems? problems? And that is his conclusion. It's very dark and it's very bleak, but that's where he. Yeah. L- leaves us and, and, and so let me just take you guys into you know what he's talking about when yeah. he talks about dataism right mm. he has some pretty thought-provoking submissions on the future of mankind and on, in particular regarding how algorithms could end up replacing human beings right yeah. so he says that humans have two core abilities the physical and the cognitive abilities but yeah. now we see that algorithms are perform outperforming humans mm-hmm. in remembering, analyzing, as well as recognizing patterns. Yeah. And he gives an example of a company in Hong Kong, which in 2014, a company called Deep Knowledge Ventures. In 2014, they decided to do something groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. They appointed an algorithm called Vital onto the board, right? <laughs> and this Vital, right, is a board member. He's just like any other human board member. Does he have he, voting rights? He has of voting course. rights. He has opinions. <laughs> He, uh, he, you know, he makes decisions. He has, he has votes yeah. on the board as well. And what they ended up finding out is that Vital actually has a pretty impressive track record. He makes good because decisions. Because he makes good decisions. And that's because he's able to make his decisions based on tons of data mm, that he yeah. you know, uh, does a lot of in-depth analysis on. Mm. And, and, and that uh, you know, apparently outperforms what, what, a, what a human uh, board member would well, be able to do. It mm. is possible. And, 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 and so just one more thing. And so what uh, Harari then is telling us is that in the future, we could end up having uh, algorithms as legal persons. <laughs> Right? They could be empowered to the extent where they you know, are completely autonomous, they make decisions, they can invest in companies. Would you elect they can an al- algorithm they, president? They, 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 <laughs> yeah, possibly, right? Possibly. And they can even create you know, wealth for themselves and end up even owning your house, <laughs> becoming your landlord, your landlord, and so on and so forth. And so what he, what he ends up saying is that we may just have an algorithmic upper class. Oof. But remember, again, an algorithm is a very simple thing. Yeah. Right? It's a set of instructions to resolve a well-defined problem. Mm. So do I you think do. we are ready for this uh, algorithmic, algorithmic class. upper class? I have... <laughs> I'm, I'm really... Okay, I'm not confused by this book. I'm very disturbed by it, if I could put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. For this reason, Homo Deus, the human as God. Mm. But this human is not really a human. This human is part human, part inorganic matter yeah. if i could call it that because it's either an algorithm which mm. takes over your cognitive functions yeah. or a machine which takes over your physical functions mm. yes. so whatever it is it's not quite a human <laughs> and i don't know about that so i have three criticisms for the whole topic yeah and the first one is where you're coming from i have to say that i sort of agree with guns jumps and steel mm-hmm. that there are certain points when certain things happen that divisions happen in human race, uh, in, yeah. in human people and their development. So as you've said, it will be an upper class, an elite of AI subhumans. Yeah. For this reason, the technology that we're making is so expensive, mm-hmm. such that the people who are able to afford it are only those with money. Mm. Yeah, very and true. only those with money will be able to use it yeah. for their benefit and use it on the rest of us who are unable to <laughs> yes. afford yeah. it. Yeah. So now I'll become Homo services? Yeah, it, that, that's what yeah, it is. Homo that's services. actually what worries me. Yeah, I'm yeah. Homo, homo slave. Homo yeah. slave. Yeah. I will homo become slave. homo slave, while others are homo deus, homo yeah. guarding over me. Yes, I reject that. Particularly reality. for us in the global south. Particularly yeah. for us in the global yeah. south, we will uh, have the new slavery, if I could call it that. The second problem I have with this is how deterministic it is. Mm. Mm. Fine. Now we've done. We've gone full circle. In Homo sapiens. Yuval goes through this progression. Mm. He says that first we were hunter gatherers, and when we were hunter gatherers, we had animism. The animals were sort of our gods. Mm-hmm. Then we went through agriculture revolution and became theists. God has given us authority. We now can manipulate the environment. Mm-hmm. We can control the plants and subdue them. Then we went through the scientific revolution and we discovered, you know what? Leave God. Mm. Who is the greatest person here? Human. I am the greatest and that was and the point he humanism. got to at Sapiens. So he mm. got to that point at Sapiens. Homo Deus takes us beyond this point into, full, again, we've left ourselves as humans, and now 
our God yeah. is data. Yeah. yeah. Data yeah. is the data new authority. Is. But you can disagree with the fact that that is the reality we live in right now. You. If you want to understand a human, you look at the data. Mm. If I want to understand who you are, I'll go to your Google, I'll go to your phone, I'll go to your emails. Facebook. I'll, exactly. I'll go to your Facebook. And that's why they say the AI will know you better than you know yourself. They, uh, Facebook already knows me better than I know myself. Me. What it does is it identifies patterns, it identifies trends, it identifies commonalities yeah. between yeah. the things that I do. But it doesn't get to the essence of who I am my hopes, wishes, dreams, ambitions, beliefs. And maybe if there's any hope that we can give people as we talk about this very bleak story, mm -hmm. is the fact that machines at the end of the day need us. AI cannot function if we are not feeding it the information that it requires to generate and learn those patterns and trends. So at the end of the day, yes, they can take over us, but I think they still need us at the end of the day. We are the feeders of that info. Yeah. I'm serious. Yes. But my final but, one is uh, the way we cannot opt out. This AI takes on our information, whether we want to give it to them or not. It's mm. always processing my data. It's always taking my information. Mm. It's always taking whether I like something, whether I stopped watching it, whether I stopped reading it. It doesn't take into consideration. Just says, Miss K stopped reading this book at this point. It means at this point it's boring. Mm. It doesn't know that what happened, I stopped reading because my kitchen fell down. <laughs> yeah. Let, yeah. Me, let me tell you my other worry about AI is that this could be, this could precipitate an Armageddon. Mm. You know, an all-out war, an yeah. all-out end war. of world war. We could, you man know, versus ma machine. We, we precisely man versus machine, and there've been sci-fi movies about this. Yeah. Now I'm beginning. After I read this book, I can see how that happens, yeah, right? True. Because we could end up empowering the machines to end up becoming self-sustaining, as yeah. you were saying earlier, if, if right? They get and to if they become self-sustaining, they can all communicate with each other. They can mm. all then, you know, Rise up and and scheme yeah. and uh, and it's obliterate the, it's us. Called the Internet of Things. And yeah. then the sixth extinction happens. <laughs> This Internet of Things thing is, you know, very concerning. Yeah. <laughs> very, very concerning, guys. This is winning headlines. Today, our winning headline was from The, the Standard, standard yeah. and our winning cartoon was from the Candela of the Daily Nation. Yeah. I think I will take Yuval Noah Harari's own conclusion where he says that this is not a book of prophecies, mm. but a book of possibilities. Possibilities. You know, of what may or may not happen. Mm. And if we don't like the possibilities, then we have an opportunity yeah. to change them. Yeah. And I do hope sincerely that we change them so that we do not become what in the book he calls the class of the useless where we have outsourced all of our functions to the point to of huduma becoming number. <laughs> to Huduma Namba. This Huduma Namba can now speak, operate, vote, and yeah. rule the country yeah. to the yeah. point of being irrelevant and having no purpose in life. Yeah. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.